he said, let us start with Genesis 1-1 and let's read the Bible and let's see what God says to us. Because this is the inerrant word of God inspired to men for instructions for us. So let us see what God says to us. If God can talk to the preacher through this book, why can't he talk to me? I said, you're right. Uh, I said, that's very good. And I had a lot of time on my hands. Uh, I wasn't really allowed to do much uh, anyway after school. So I said, why not? Let's read the Bible. Um, I, I was somewhat nerdy as, as a 14, 15 year old, 16 year old. Um, so I, we started to read the Bible and we decided to go from Genesis 1-1. And what we tried to do, this was the attempt that we made, was to not think of anything that we'd ever heard about Christianity, but to open the Bible and let's say I just found this book in the desert and read it and see what it says to me. Let it talk to us. So we started Genesis 1-1 and we started reading through the Bible. You know, we, we did some of it together and most of it I did by myself uh, because I, I, I'm a very, very quick reader. So I, I, I decided to read a lot on my own. And as I was reading through the Bible, um, I started to notice the stories that I had heard in Sunday school. You know, you start reading Genesis, you read about Adam and Eve, we all know that story. Um, you start to read about uh, Deuteronomy, Exodus, you know, the stories of Moses, the story of, of Noah, the story of Lot and Abraham, and all these stories that I know. But I was surprisingly and astonishingly shocked by some of the stories that I read about these same people that I learned about in Sunday school. Um, just for instance, and, and this is a big testament to why Allah kept sending us prophets and why Islam was sent as a complete and perfected deen with the Qur'an. If you read about Noah in the Bible, there is the story about Noah saving uh, uh, humanity from the flood with an ark and all of that. There is this in the Bible. There's other, another aspect to the story of Noah that, that not many people know about unless they actually take time to open a Bible. This will not be preached from any pulpit anywhere. Is that the, the Bible says that Noah was an alcoholic. This is the Bible's portrayal of Noah, or Nuh alayhi salam. That he was an alcoholic, he was a drunkard. This is the word used in the Bible. That he was a man given to alcohol. And <clears throat> I'm a psychology major, and my... my, my uh, field of specialty is mental illnesses and, and alcoholism is one of those, is, is a mental illness. And I know from seeing alcoholism's effect on one of my close uh, friend's parents, uh, I know that someone who is truly addicted to alcohol, and if Noah lived for so long addicted to alcohol, he was seriously addicted to alcohol, um, it is hard for someone addicted to alcohol to hold down a nine to five job working at McDonald's flipping hamburgers, much less construct an ark to save humanity from a flood that's never happened. So that stopped me for a moment in my tracks. And I said, Noah was an alcoholic. You know, and, and it, it bothered me for a minute because I said, I, you know, things started popping in my mind like, if Noah was a drunkard, how did he know God was talking to him? Because, you know, I've seen some people, they're alcoholics, you know, you were just asleep in my dog's food bowl the other night, drooling, and now you're telling me you were talking to God last night. You know, this, this you know, to rationally, that would not make sense to me. That's like, you know, an alcoholic on the street coming to you and tell you God's talking to him. You know, he has no, this would give this man no validity. This man has no validity with anyone. So, I didn't pay it too much attention. It caught me, but I said, you know what, I'm going to keep going because... There's one thing that you don't do in Christianity, and I'll tell you what it, was, it is in a minute when I started doing it. Um, then I came across the story of Lot, or Lut alayhi salam. And we all know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah in, in these stories, but there's a, another very twisted story in the Bible about Lot and his daughters. There's a story of Lot and his daughters uh, uh, in, in, in the Bible that says his daughters got him drunk one night and seduced him and committed incest with him. Audhu billah. This is the Bible, this is one of the Bible portrayals of the prophets of God. The person who saved, saved, uh, 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 or, or saved his family from Sodom and Gomorrah. This is the story that is in the Bible. So I'm catching myself again like, oh, this is becoming a really uh, bad habit that I'm seeing. This is becoming a bad recurrence that I'm seeing over and over again in this Bible. So... You know, after that I started, you know, speeding through some of the other mumbo jumbo to get to more of these prophet stories. And I got to the story, there, there, there are others, and there are some stories in the Bible that are not PG rated, period. They're not rated for talking anywhere. 
You know, you would need a, 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 an 18 and up ID card to be able for me to even tell you these stories. So uh, the one that tre intrigued me, the, uh, that caught my attention the most, was of my most beloved story in the Bible, and that was of David and Goliath. Uh, that was my most intriguing story to me because not only was, you know, it said that in the Bible that David was a very small man and Goliath was a very big man, and that was appealing to me because I was o I've always been very short, and as a kid I was really short. So, you know, I said, uh, this was a very beautiful story to me just in its pros and in, in, in its concept of overcoming. And so I started to read about David. And there are be very beautiful stories about David in the Bible. There are indeed. But there is one story about David in the Bible that shocked me to my core. And it's a story about three people. There's three people in, in, in this drama. David, Bathsheba, and Uriah. And... It says that David saw, uh, saw this woman named Bathsheba, and she was one of the most beautiful women of her time. Uh, and she happened to be married to one of the commanders of his army named Uriah. But David on this day decided that he was not able to resist his temptation uh, to be with this woman Bathsheba, so he did. Uh, and he committed adultery with her. And knowing that he did this, he, that the, the way that he decided to cover it up was he sent a letter to the generals of his army saying that when the battle was fierce for everyone to pull back and abandon Uriah uh, so that he would be killed and when he dies then he could have Bathsheba no harm no foul so David went from being the slayer of Goliath the hero for man to uh, an adulterer a, a, a plotter and a murderer and so this is when I really caught myself and said hold on now Something's wrong here. Something's got to give. I said because to me, God's prophets in my mind were people of example. People who I could follow as an example. Someone who was supposed to be the best of us so that we could follow them and emulate them. And I'm, they're turning out to be worse than some of the people that you see on America's Most Wanted. David is somebody that if I only knew this about him from the Bible, I see him coming down the street. I'm going the other way and calling 911 because he has to have a warrant out on him for something. This is what I'm thinking in my mind. This man is not an honorable man at all. He, he okay, he killed Goliath, yeah, but he killed this other guy named Uriah to be able to commit adultery with his wife. So I, I, I did. I committed the cardinal sin in Christianity. I started asking questions. Um, this is the one thing you do not do in Christianity is you don't ask questions, especially not about issues like this. Um, so I went to my pastor and I started asking questions, you know, what, what's going on here? You know, pastor, there's, there's a, a very bad recurring uh, habit about these men in the Bible. What is, what is the deal here? And I remember he told me the same thing that I, almost every pastor or every evangelist or anyone I talked to about this, same, same, same answer, almost like it was programmed. They would put their hand on my shoulder and say, Brother Joshua, don't let a little bit of knowledge wreck your faith. Because you're not justified by knowledge, you're justified by faith. Uh, and they would quote me verses like, lean not on understanding, you know, Paul's, we're justified by faith in Jesus Christ. You know, this is all, they would quote this whole line of thing to me like it was already pre-programmed, that they, like they programmed in pastor school that people are going to ask you questions and here's the answer. Um, so, you know, I said to myself, you know, I don't know, pastor, you know, this just seems kind of odd. He said, let me tell you something. Uh... What you're reading is the Old Testament referring to God's covenant with the children of Israel. Uh, and they were a different people, a very stubborn, crazy people. Uh, so why don't you move on to the New Testament? Uh, in the New Testament, you'll find the new covenant they were under with Jesus Christ. And I promise you things will change and be better. I said, okay, perfect. So I read all the, went ahead and finished and got to Malachi and then started with the New Testament. So I, you know, I opened the New Testament and I said, here we go. You know, let's start all over again. But there were a few things that I had learned from the Old Testament that, that, that I wanted to keep in mind when I started to read the New Testament. I learned, number one, that God was one in a unique sense. This is what I learned from the Old Testament, that God was one in a singular, unique sense. This is over and over and over and over very clearly in the Bible. God's nature is one. This is so clear through the Old Testament. And that he was very jealous about his worship. And every single time the children of Israel would turn to something else other than him, he would punish them and restrict their lifestyle. This is something that I learned. And it kind of 
sim the similitude to me with how God dealt with the children of Israel was, and, and hate to use this stark, contra uh, this stark contrast, but it's almost as if one of uh, one of us went out, God forbid, I hope not, and let's say we went out here and, and robbed a bank. You rob a bank, you're going to jail for a long time. And every day when you wake up, do you think that that jail is going to look like the, the, the Hilton at LAX? No, I, I, I doubt it. It's probably dark, cold, bad food, orange jumpsuits, not nice people, the whole nine yards. And the reason why this is, and I know this now from studying psychology, is that this is supposed to be a stark reminder every single day when this person wakes up that you are in jail. This is supposed to remind them every single day you're in jail because you committed a crime. And we run this, not you. This is the message that is being portrayed to this person in jail. So when the children of Israel kept rebelling against God, He restricted their lifestyle. If you study Judaic law now, it is some of the most strict religious laws.